Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we are taking the Jaguar I-Pace down our rally course. <laughs> Welcome back to the show everybody and today we are taking our second electric car down the rally course. Now so far the only electric car we've taken down the rally track is the Porsche Taycan Turbo S and that was quite a few episodes ago now. Turbo is sitting in a fifth place at the moment. It did a respectable 2 minute 8 second lap time which was... Uh, a lot better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Uh, it's an all-wheel drive, low-slung sports car, and of course, it is electric as well. Now, the I-Pace here is more of a crossland vehicle. Um, it's kind of halfway between a sporty vehicle and an SUV, and of course, it is electric. It is all-wheel drive as well. But let's go ahead and upgrade the thing first. It starts off in A-Class, so not too much room for upgrading um, but it already has quite a lot of the upgrades I want to do to the vehicle anyway it obviously has the electric motor in it we can go ahead and actually upgrade that starts off with almost 400 horsepower 500 foot pounds of torque we can go ahead and upgrade that to 473 horsepower or we can go right up to 512 which i think we're gonna do it only adds 118 horsepower upgrading it and i think we're gonna need it for the pi anyway um as far as aero parts we're not limited by things we can do but you can see that the splitter is actually going to lower the ground clearance of the vehicle so i'm not going to bother with that and the rear wing um we'll go ahead and add it but it doesn't really do much to be quite honest with you it's the smallest rear wing i've ever seen fitted to a vehicle but there we go now all the vehicles are going to be fitted with the off-road tire compound unless they only have the option of the race tire compound so this vehicle has the formerly known rally tires so we're going to fit them on the vehicle and also increase the uh the tire width as well that's going to provide a little bit more surface for traction a lot of the electric vehicles nowadays have really thin wheels to try and increase uh, decrease rolling resistance obviously increasing the range of the vehicle but for something like what we're doing with the vehicle that's actually not great skinny little tires off-road are not the best idea um, you want reasonably fat tyres. Um, we can go ahead and increase the track width as well. It's not really going to increase it that much. So I'm just going to leave it stock. Um, I'm not even sure if this thing is actually going to get into S1 class to be quite honest with you. We can go ahead and put in a drift transmission if we want to. I'm <laughs> not going to do that. Um, as far as differential goes, I'm going to go ahead and put in the rally diff. And then um, let's go ahead and put some race brakes on this and off-road springs and dampers and actually do some weight reduction on this thing. It's just going to put this thing into S1 class, so I'm going to call that good enough. Um, we'll go ahead and put in uh, some anti-roll bars as well, forgot those. Um, so it's literally just into S1 class, but that hits the criteria. It keeps its stock drivetrain. Um, it has the rally tire compound and it is S1 class. So it is going to go down our rally course. And let's see what kind of uh, lap time we can put down in this thing. I'm going to go ahead and tune and paint it and I'll meet you guys over there. All right, here we go for our first run in the I-Pace. Now, of course, being electric, this thing is very, very silent, which for me is not great. I mean, I don't need to change gear in this thing, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, but we saw that with the Taycan. It's very difficult to judge speed with the electric cars um, because you're not listening to the engine note. 
Now, since it is a Jaguar, I decided to go with the Tom Walking Trail Racing livery. I think it fits the vehicle really nicely. The Jaguar is uh, fighting me for grip a little bit there. I chucked it in quite deep through the uh, through that left-hand turn through the water splashes there, and the Jaguar sort of got a little bit of a twitch going on. But um, it's actually doing really, really well. I was not expecting this vehicle to cope as well as it is doing. Compared to uh, the Crown Vic we took in the last episode, this thing is doing far, far better. It feels a little bit slow top end. Uh, coming down that straight section there, it was uh, a little bit slow feeling coming into the hairpin here. Let's see how it deals. Quite a lot of understeer, actually. Um, but it's soaking up the bumps reasonably well. I'd say it's soaking up the bumps a bit better than the Taycan did. The Taycan was actually quite a planted vehicle, though. I was very surprised how well that vehicle stuck to the course. But um, the I-Pace is putting on an equally good show here. I mean, it is kind of this crossover SUV style body so it is more designed for this sort of thing than the Porsche was um, but the I-Pace just feels like it's lacking a little bit in the top end department um, but it is sticking to the course like glue I'd hate to think what this thing would be like on uh, the race tyre compound on the off-road race tyre compound it would be an absolute monster uh, but unfortunately the rules of the series don't allow us to fit those tyres to the vehicle. But we cross the line at a respectable 218.272 for our first run. That is already going to put the thing in 11th place just behind the... Uh, sorry. that Yeah, that's just going to put it uh, just in a 11th place just behind the DeLorean DMC-12. If it can beat the DeLorean, then I'll be quite happy. That did a 2.16. We only got to shave off two more seconds in the I-Pace. Um, so let's see what we can do in our next couple of runs. Okay, round number two. Let's see what we can do. This thing gets off the line really nice. The electric cars, obviously... They don't have any gears, it's just an electric motor spinning faster and faster and faster. So off the line, they don't spin the wheels, which is really, really nice. Now coming into this corner here, I'm going to brake a little bit early. Uh, again, the silentness of the engine makes it very difficult to judge the speed of the vehicle. Now I'm going to keep it to the right through that water splash. I'm also going to keep it to the right through this water splash. We found it's a little bit shallower just on the right hand side of that water splash. You can pick up a couple of tenths of a second just through there. Now this already feels like a faster run. Um, the I-Pace, obviously it is four wheel drive, so it sticks a lot better than the rear wheel drive vehicles. Uh, but through the corners, it's just not even drifting at all. It is a planted vehicle. Uh, let's see what it does on this section up here. It is uh, a little bit bumpy, but it's actually not uncontrollable. I did lift a little bit through there. We got a little bit of lift off oversteer. Now, last time we had quite a lot of understeer in the hairpin. Still a little bit, but not quite as bad as the previous run. Now, coming down here, we don't get air on the jump because it weighs so much. Um, but this thing is just sticking. I cannot get over how well this thing just grips to the road. Let's sort of see what mile an hour we get when we crest the hill here. Around 108. That is not too shabby, to be honest. I mean, this thing is only just into S1 class. So you've got to remember, it doesn't quite have the, uh, the top end speed of some of the vehicles we've driven so far. But you can just chuck this thing into the rally course and it is just sticking. It is incredibly, incredibly good through the corners. It has so much grip, even with the rally tyres. If we had the off-road race tyre compound, I hate to think what this thing would be like. It would be an absolute monster. We're coming down the hill now. Let's see what we can actually do. Are we going to beat our previous lap time? We are by almost two seconds, which is absolutely in. 
incredible. Uh, we're still just behind the DeLorean, only five tenths of a second behind the DeLorean. So I'm hoping with one more run, we can just bump it into the 215s, uh, possibly even beat the Audi Quattro Sport from the first episode. So here we go, one more run in the Jaguar I-Pace. Let's see if we can actually beat the DeLorean and hopefully beat the Audi Quattro Sport as well. I'm going to do my very, very best to put down the best lap time I can. I'm going to actually talk a little bit less on this attempt uh, just to try and uh, control the vehicle a little bit more, pick up that couple of tenths of a second that we need just to get it into that 2.15. Coming into these corners here, we've got a little bit of oversteer actually. That is going to slow us down a little bit, but we are faster on that right hand side through that water splash. We're hitting the racing lines really, really nicely. Need to get it slowed down for that corner. That wasn't great through there, I'll be honest. I thought I could get away with a lot more speed than we could. Um, through this corner though, it's absolutely magnificent through there. Although the all-wheel drive is fighting us a little bit. I have traction control, stability control, all the other driver assists turned off. Um, but the vehicle naturally has a little bit of that in the four-wheel drive system, which you can never get rid of and cannot turn off. Now, let's see what we do in the hairpin. Still a little bit of understeer. That is the only thing I'll say about this vehicle. It does have a little bit of understeer when you're turning in to quite a deep, corner like the hairpin there but through these corners here you can keep it absolutely flat you can see that no brake lights came on through there we can just keep the foot down and get it moving now when we get to the top of the crest there 110 that is pretty decent actually from the eye pace that's the fastest we've seen out of it so far uh, let's see what it actually does on this corner here this is where some of the vehicles actually tend to struggle the I-Pace sticks so beautifully through that corner, actually. You can keep your foot in it. And that is actually where we're going to uh, pick up a couple of tenths of a second. Now, in some of these corners here, I'm just actually lifting instead of braking to try and, uh, try and uh, pick up that couple of tenths that we need. Let's see what we do on the run down the hill. It's going to be a 2 16 unfortunately not going to beat the audi quattro and we're still literally two tenths of a second behind the delorean almost matching that time uh, so that is actually going to put the jaguar i-pace in 11th place that was our fastest run but let's go to the leaderboard and actually see how this thing racks up with those other vehicles well, there we have it, guys. That is going to be the time for the TWR Jaguar I-Pace. A 2.16.503 is going to put it two-tenths of a second behind the DeLorean. I can't get over that. I was really hoping it was going to beat that time. Um, but it is quite a ways down the pack, to be honest. I was hoping it might get in the uh, top ten. Sadly, it was nowhere near the pace of the Porsche Taycan. Um, but very, very interesting. I'm always curious to see how different vehicles will perform. Sometimes they sort of surprise me. And other vehicles like this uh, sort of can be a little bit disappointing. But to be honest, the takeaway from this is actually how well this thing sticks to the road. It doesn't quite have the top end speed, yes, but it has all of the grip. It is probably the best gripping vehicle I have driven down here, bar maybe the LM002. That thing was insane. Um, but the Jaguar is right up there for stability and predictability. You can just throw this thing into the corners and it sticks like glue. And I seem to remember that the Porsche was kind of like that, but I think the Jaguar does outpace the Porsche in levels of controllability but that's going to do it for the jaguar i-pace i hope you guys did enjoy this episode let me know in the comments down below what vehicle you want to see me do in the next episode hopefully you can join us for that next wednesday and uh, have a good week i will see you all in the next video